Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming to our session this afternoon. Um, my name is Chloe Lampard, and I'm going to start us off on this whirlwind tour of linked data. Um, see if the paper works. <laughs> Maybe not. I may have to come back over here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, for today's presentation, we're going to try to run through all of these topics. We're going to talk a little bit about how we got started with linked data, all the way through where we are today with our project, and we're going to show you what I think are some of the most compelling things to see in the world of linked data, how we visualize uh, the data and show it to users. Just to orient us to begin the presentation, we're going to present a definition here that will guide the rest of the presentation. When we talk about linked data, what we're referring to is a set of best practices for publishing and linking the data. It has to be machine readable. And I get a lot of questions about linked data. What is, what is really linked data all about? How do you define it? And I found that one of the ways that is helpful to think about it is thinking about upgrading our data. Data comes in all different formats. For instance, there's a website here, Five Star Data. You can go to this and look at the diagram. But in a nutshell, you could have, for instance, on one end of the spectrum, a scan of an Excel document with the temperature in St. Louis. That scan will give you that piece of information, that content is available to you, but it's not great data. On the other end of the spectrum, you might take it out of the Excel spreadsheet um, altogether. You could put the spreadsheet on the web itself. You could put it in a non-proprietary format. You could assign a URI to that piece of data, and then you could link it to other temperatures elsewhere, and that would be the other end of the spectrum. So we're talking about taking our Dublin Core metadata records that are housed in our digital collections and transforming them from a lower end of the spectrum to the higher end of the spectrum. How did we get started with this? Well, we're a small digital collections department, but we were very interested in what we heard in the conferences and the buzz about linked data. So we decided to dig a little bit deeper. We formed a study group and we decided after studying the topic, let's try it. And I'd like to emphasize today that we want you to leave this presentation feeling like you can do linked data too. If we can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Why would we want to do this in the first place? Um, the main reason is that our data is trapped. It lives inside records, which live inside collections. It's very hard to show users the links that are existing, the relationships that are existing between those records, those collections, across different people's collections. We have to manually show people those links right now, and that just isn't it isn't an ideal situation. So what we're hoping is by showing you an al alternative through linked data that we can do something different. We can free our metadata from the silos that it lives in. We can expose those types of relationships. We can then link things together seamlessly. And our users can start to discover things in really compelling ways. Not only will they have more precise search results, but we can repurpose the data and they can repurpose the data in all sorts of very interesting ways. So sometimes you have to make the case for linked data. <laughs> you have to make the case for a new initiative. So here's the problem we face. Right now, we have very rich metadata that exists in Dublin Core records that when they are harvested, that richness is lost. Then the harvesters may produce linked data, but it's not reflecting the full richness of our, re our records. So we decided we wanted to try to create linked data that preserved that richness. We see a lot of theory about linked data in the world, but there isn't a recipe on how to do this. It's a little bit difficult to know how to get started, and there aren't a lot of projects to reference to tell you how to do it. It also takes a bit of a paradigm shift for us to think beyond the record, to think of in a post-record world where we embrace you know, URIs and different sorts of data um, representations. But we find that this is very exciting, even though it's very uncertain. So right now, 
We're from Las Vegas. We work at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and so we have a picture here of Frank Sinatra for you. This is an example of starting to pick apart a metadata record and turn it into something um, going towards linked data. This image, this photograph, has lots of rich information in it. This is just a very small picture of um, what we might start, it, start to extract from the photograph. Frank Sinatra um, has a profession, entertainer. The photograph was created by the Las Vegas News Bureau. You sort of see where we're going with this. These are all just graphical representations of things we know about the photograph. But that's just one record amongst many collections that we have in our digital collections. Not only do we have collections with Frank Sinatra, we also have showgirl costume designs. We have a casino architecture collection. We have all sorts of collections that connect to each other. But users don't necessarily know that. And they wouldn't necessarily go to each collection to find those relationships on their own. So hidden in between all of those connections are relationships between different things. And what we decided is when we started to map out all of our items and how they might be deconstructed, that there were a compelling number of connections that people couldn't find. So we decided that we would develop a project. And the project was to study how feasible is it for us to create a process that would allow us to convert our collection records into linked open data, keeping the richness of the Dublin Core metadata that we create, and then allowing us to learn how to publish it into the linked data cloud, and ultimately test it with users so they could see this new experience and discoverability. So this is how we started our project. I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Sylvia, also from UNLV, and she's going to talk about implementation. OK, um, so here we are with this idea and where to start, right? Um, one of the first things we did is a very um, deep um, analysis of what was available for us to go from our records to linked data. And most of what we found were open source um, uh, tools. So, and, and after researching all this software, we kind of pre-select the ones we are going to use. And this is a very, very um, um, high simplification of the, uh, the phases of the system. So here I'm just talking about three of them. So in phase one, we, we realized we needed to clean our data inside ContentDM. It's our content management system. We need to clean it. And there were various things we needed to do, and I'm going to talk about them. Um, after cleaning the data, we export it uh, in uh, a spreadsheet um, and import it in a new software called Open Open Refine. It's an open source software that is created to, to manage data or to transform um, one kind of data in another kind. Anyway, so we import the data to this system. We prepare the data, and I'm going to show some examples of this. We reconcile the data, so when we use control vocabularies that are well known, like Library of Congress, how we can reconcile that with, you know, bringing from the um, Library of Congress that now, nowadays has URIs, unique identifiers for each one of the terms, <coughs> how we can bring that to our system. And then we generate linked data that are triples. Um, did you talk about triples? Mm -hmm. Yeah, triples are uh, how we express the data in, in, in linked data world. And then we export that linked data in order to publish it. Um, so the third, the, the third phase is to import data and to publish. And for that one, we use a different software called Mugara or Virtuoso. 
Okay. In order to clean the data within ContentDM, the things that we have done is to have metadata elements <coughs> common to across all our collections. We use well-defined um, CVs, control vocabularies. For those terms that we want to use or for, for those names that uh, we have for um, uh, names that, that show in our photos or in or some historic name, if they are not in the Library of Congress, we then created um, local control vocabularies. But we needed to share those control vocabularies across all collections so that we can identify the same person uh, um, in one time with one particular uh, unique identifier. So, in the phase two, then we, um, after we, we clean that, um, we, after we clean the data, we prepare, reconcile, that is to bring the URIs, generate, triple, and export. Uh, we use the Open Refine, which is a server which can communicate with other data sets uh, uh, using the HTTP protocol. And uh, we can generate the triples um, that we need for linked data using this particular software. So I'm going to show to you just a few examples of things. The first one is when we import the spreadsheet from our digital collections to the Open Refine. And it appears very much as a spreadsheet where the columns are the content and here are the, the type of uh, metadata elements that we have. This, this, um, this system has a very nice feature, which are the facets. So for example, here I have the general terms. And on the left side, I have the, um, the actual terms appearing in a facet. If you, I, I'm, I'm sure you can't read it, but the terms are grouped together separate by semicolon. That is a problem for linked data. We need each term by itself. So there is another function in open refine that will split both the values. And you say that the mutual values are separated by a character. In this case, would be a semicolon. And then, if you do again the facet, the terms will be all separated. So it, it really allows you to do a lot of manipulation and preparation of the data to be transformed into linked data. Um, the other thing I just mentioned is the fact that it can reconcile with uh, some of the control vocabularies that are out there, like the Library of Congress, uh, authority files. And for this, we created a reconcile service. Uh, we put uh, information about where the system should go to get the information about the unique identifier of the terms. And, and these are when we fill in this form. And what, so once we create the reconcile uh, service, then we start it in a particular uh, column. In this case here, we use in graphic elements, the TGM, which is thesaurus of graphic materials. We, we use, and so we are reconcile with, the, uh, with this uh, control vocabulary. So here is the result. And here you can see this indicates that 
there was a full reconciliation and we are able to bring the unique identifiers of those terms to our system. Uh, okay, so now we clean the data and we reconcile and now we needed to start transforming it into <coughs> linked data. But how we are going to do that? Um, if I'm going to create triples, which is subject, predicate, and object, um, what language I'm going to use, what terms I'm going to use. This is why we adopt a data model. And uh, this comes from the Europeana. It's um, a, a consortium that uh, created a model to generate linked data. Um, with that model, we map to our elements, digital elements that we have. For example, uh, we know that if we have title, we want to create a triple using DC title. I mean, it's the title that was defined within the Dublin Core element set. So we are not going to go into details of this, but the idea is that you have an idea that we adopt a model to make the transformation between our metadata to linked data. So in order for the system to create the linked data, we need to express that mapping into a skeleton. They call it a skeleton. And here it is. In this first column, this is a way for us to create unique identifier for each unique material that we are describing. And here, for example, is the mapping. In our in our um, collection, we have, for, for example, a description of the photograph of the material that we are uh, dealing with. And so we map that to DC doubling for creation. So this map, once we have a model, this map is not <coughs> difficult to develop. Okay, um, as we create that map, um, we can verify the triples that have been uh, created. I know you can't see it, but basically it says, if, if I'm talking about description, it says the identification of the photograph, let's say, um, it's the subject. The predicate is the DC description, and then the de description itself. This is what is uh, showed here in this um, triple. So the system creates the triples for you, as long as you make the right um, um, mapping. Once we create triples for all our metadata, then we are going to export the, those files that are now uh, linked data. And so we did those two phases, and now we are in the third phase of this, the, the process. In the third phase, we are going to import that linked data in some some place, and it is called the triple stores, where they obviously um, manage triples. Then we publish, and we can query them. So I'm sorry. So in the phase three, we import the data, publish, and query. And for that, we use a system called Mugara. And it's very simple. You just upload the, the file that you created with your linked data. And this is the, 
this is wonderful uh, triples that we created. The, the only reason I'm showing to you is to tell you that in here, so this is a triple, uh, in here you, we have URIs or unique identifiers from Europeana, DBpedia, GeoNames, and Library of Congress. What that reflects in the result of, of our link data is that we are already creating link with all those uh, other um, control vocabularies. Okay, now, okay, we got to all those triple, triples, and now how can we use this? What, what is the advantage of using this? We are in an exploration phase of the project at this point, but we are going to show to you a few visualization tools that we have used. And we are going to start with the open link virtual pivot viewer. Then we will show you RHEL Finder and Jeffy. These are three open source um, systems. So the open link uh, viewer, what is nice about it is that it's very good for <coughs> images to show images instead of showing the triples with the URI, it show images. Um, and for that, in order to show the image, we needed to pre-select which images we want to show. And that goes uh, through a uh, Sparkle query. Sparkle is a language specific for the, um, to deal with um, uh, triples. And um, it allows us to also refine the, what we are seeing through the facets. And uh, another interesting thing about it, once we create, once we create a, a query, we can make that query, the result of that query, a collection, a dynamic collection. So let's see how it works. Um, and, and please have it into your mind that this is not for a user to do. We would never do this, but <laughs> this is what is behind the scene. So we can create those um, Sparkle queries for the <coughs> user. And let's go to the. Um, so, as the um, as the uh, the they told us that probably we would not have very good uh, internet connection, so we created few videos to show the, uh, the, the, the work that we did with the Pivot Viewer. Okay, yeah, let's go. So this is what is behind the scene. And, and this collect, what we are going to show is design of, uh, custom design of um, showgirls. So here are the, the, the all showing the images of the custom designs that were selected. And um, whenever we are interested in one particular design, we can select it. <coughs> now select this one. And then on this side, we have all the metadata that we created in our collection, and but now they are triples, but we still can bring them here. Uh, here we are looking for a different, a different um, custom design, and again here comes all the, the information that we created as metadata before. Now we are using facets on this side. And here we are selecting the creator, and then it brings all the custom design of um, that creator that is the set. Um, 
Now select a different creator and showing all the designs of the other creator. And now we go to subject and select everything that has hats. And here are the, the custom that have hats. Um, and now gloves. It's a very nice <laughs> example. And, uh, and robes. Okay. And again, whenever we select one, we can see all the information right there. Okay. The other feature is right on the top. We could, um, we, we select creator and then said create the columns with the image for each creator. So here we show. And of his, if we can um, uh, zoom it so we can see better the, uh, the images. And this was a selection of one particular creator, and then it undo the, the, the columns and then just that creator. And then again, uh, subjects and creating the columns for subjects because it can't put all the subjects here. It creates like a, um, a range of subjects. And that is in alphabet order. <coughs> And uh, so we can refine, refine to a point where we find something that interests like this uh, custom design that have feathers and, and so on. Okay. Okay, I think that's probably it. Yes. Right. Uh, so this is one one of the possible views, and what I think it is interesting is that what we we have behind it are those triples, and how we can get to this. Um, the other the other one, yeah, the other one is more. Uh, um, a system that allows us to explore um, relationships and among people and among things. And we'll see two examples of them. This first example comes from an oral history of uh, African Americans in Las Vegas. And what we did here is we look into their interviews and um, and we saw which names they talk about, what people they talk about, and what was the relationship with those people. So here, um, yeah, we can start. I'm trying to start. Yeah. So here we are uh, just adding the names of the people that uh, we want to see the relationships among them. and find relationships, and here is Duncan, Ruby Duncan and Tolan, Helen Tolan. And there are two relationships here, and when we click and in that, in, in that or this, it shows on the left side the information about those people. And to see this um, particular there is a relationship that is known by, let me see, okay. Duncan has a record in, in Library of Congress we just saw, and this is a relationship that involves someone else, okay? So this, that is friend of this, which is friend of this person. So now we added someone else into the relationship to look for a relationship, and that doesn't, it's not part of it, <laughs> <laughs> just came. <laughs> and um, 
okay? And now the system is adding that third person and then bringing all the relationships <coughs> that it found in the collection. This um, looks like a live kind of um, animal, right? <laughs> So the relationships that we create are friend of, <coughs> known by reputation, colleague of. There is a control vocabulary that it's just of, of relationships. Uh, from here, we can <coughs> see when this was clicked, it was related to many people. And in particular, Eva, this one, is the person more that has more relationships. So we understand that probably this is not much for the regular user, but maybe for a researcher that is uh, looking into this community and might find it interesting to find the relationships. And again, for each node we click, we get information about it, about the person. I think that's it. <coughs> okay. Uh, oh, sorry. No, this. Yeah, the second, the second um, example we are going to show here is not much, rela the relationship is not much as this type where, where the person knows the other or so on. But the relationship is because they are in the same photograph, for example. So it's a, a different kind of relationship. So, yeah, we can start. And here, our most famous person, Frank Sinatra. Uh, the relationship between Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin in our collection. And um, here we go. So if you see this number here, it means that we brought it from Library of Congress. So here it's creating the relationship. You can see that what relate them are photographs. <coughs> okay, so, and the other interesting thing is when we, when we, Click on uh, Frank Sinatra. The information that you are seeing here comes from DBpedia because we make a relationship with DBpedia, which is the Wikipedia. The same thing with Dean Martin. Uh, and Dean Martin also has a Library of Congress connection to Library of Congress, which allows in the future when someone else create um, data about Dean Martin using the Library of Congress ID, it will be connected with us. Then another, and now we didn't put a person, but we did, we included a sense of talent casino. So what are the relationship between Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, and the sense of talent casino? So this is why I try to, um, relationships among things. Uh, here, while between Sinatra and Dean Martin, a lot of the relationships is through photographs. Uh, here there is a show, Ziegfeld Follies, that link them to the sense of hell. Unfortunately, the screen was was too small to show all those relationships. So when you, you say this is a relationship to a photograph, you see the photograph there and see um, you know, the 
shows who is who in that photograph. Uh, the other thing, uh, when we click in Sense Hotel, the Sense Hotel information that came there came from Wikipedia. And this is all because we use the same URI, the unique <coughs> identifier in DBpedia and our collection. Okay, the, the idea of showing this to you, it might be a little confusing, is just for you to have ideas of the kind of thing you can do with linked data. And I think we are not even close to explore all possibilities, but this were just right away when we create the, the triples, we are able to plug in some of those visualization system that show us that kind of um, relationship. So the last one is Jeffy. We have been playing with Jeffy, but for, um, and this is a very good to show relationship. It has a much more sophisticated uh, interface. And um, also we are working with it. We didn't get to a point that we wanted to show. So we are showing um, one example of, um, <coughs> of uh, the, the link, link data, no, linked to jazz. Have you seen this? <coughs> this is a very nice using Gaffy. It, it is about the jazz musicians and their interrelationships. So here I'm just clicking through the names of them and show who they are interrelated to. In that particular one, if we click that one, which is Mary Lou, uh, then the, um, the system rearranges and put her in the middle as center, and then all the, the other p uh, musicians that are related to her. So again, uh, selecting this one, this person will be in the middle and the relationship with, with her will be shown. It is kind of a selected. This is an option. You could also go through the names of them and select the name you want to see what relationship is there. And, um, or you can search for in this case, we are searching for for base count, um, and then we are searching for other people to see what other musicians to see what are the relationships. And Billy Holiday, yeah. But anyway, it's very dynamic. I think it's very interesting. Um, in this project, which is, this project is developed by the, um, inst the um, Pratt, Pratt Institute in New York. And um, what I thought was interesting is that they, besides uh, creating this network of people, they also are asking the crowd to, to, to tell them what kind of relationship exists between those musicians so that they can add the specific kind of relationship that they don't show here. Okay. Can... okay, so we are at this point in the project just exploring those um, visualization tools and this, uh, we are transforming all digital collections into linked data. We are evaluating alternative interfaces like the ones I showed. We are creating, freezing the linkage with other data sets but because this is very important so that the users can actually 
go beyond the, the, the context that we have. We are preparing to pu publish our collection into the link open data as link link open data. We are planning for this um, this coming uh, this semester to I mean the, the fall semester to start developing an interface that would integrate our data with other um, data sets with similar data. And we intend to produce a cost-benefit analysis to inform future, future plans for the development of our collections. Okay, this is a project implemented and managed by two busy librarians. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and we, st we talk about this because it's not just for technological people that it's so focused on technology, we could do it, um, you know, with a mix of all our tasks that we do as librarians. We didn't have any particular model to follow, and we started experiment as much as possible and evaluating what was available for us there. So we understand that with interest and motivation, it is a feasible goal to create metadata and, oh, I'm sorry, create link data. And the benefits seem quite interesting. We are still exploring the benefits of it. <laughs> Okay, and thank you, and if you have any questions.